Uh, welcome again to Barat Ministries. We're moving on with the Sermon on the Mount. Again, every time I keep saying, please go back. If you miss one of the, one, one of the sessions, please go back. They're all on, on the website. Uh, tonight, today, we're looking at um, uh, the Matthew 5 again. Blessed are those who are persecuted for his name's sake, for Jesus' name's sake. And I'm just going to turn to Maurice so he can continue to explain to us. Good morning, good afternoon, good, good day, Maurice. How are you? Hello, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me read where we're up to, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Yeah. This is the character of a disciple. We've looked at all the attributes, there's mm -hmm. seven of them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the humble. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they that mourn, that grieve. Blessed are the meek, the teachable. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, live in a right life. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the merciful, they'll obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, they'll see God. Hmm. Blessed are the peacemakers. That's the end of the character of God. You become a peacemaker. You're able to be like Jesus, reconcile men to God, mm. husband to wife, children to parents. And then we've got the consequence of having the character of Christ. And it amazes most Christians because the only conclusion to a holy life is persecution. <laughs> And so this is last study. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Because you live in a right life, and we showed that it's always because of envy. Yes. It, it's God's people who are envious because yes. they see God on your life yeah. and it challenges them. Mm -hmm. But now we come to the ultimate and it's mm -hmm. verse 11. Blessed are ye. So blessed means God favoured. Yes, you're in the right, the right place. place. Mm -hmm. God's pleased with you. Mm -hmm. When men revile you mm -hmm. and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake, mm -hmm. rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Mm -hmm. So it's very challenging, Joseph, because yeah. people think, well, if I'm like God, if I'm holy, mm -hmm. then I will be blessed, God will prosper me, mm -hmm. I will have a peaceful life. Mm -hmm. um, and yet Jesus is saying the opposite. In this world, you'll have tribulation. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I've overcome the world. And Jesus says things like, you know, if they persecuted me, mm -hmm. they'll persecute you. If mm -hmm. they accept my words, they'll accept yours. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was holy mm -hmm. and he spoke wonderful words and yep. they persecuted him. So he's trying to say to us, look, if you mm -hmm. follow me, if mm -hmm. you're holy mm -hmm. and you speak the truth, mm -hmm then you'll get the same as I got. It's true because, um, and I like the fact that Jesus, right at the beginning, right on the onset, he's letting us know where we're going and what's going to happen. And I just like that because it's good when the word gets fulfilled in your life. Yeah. Because people are jealous. And the sad thing more is, is that it's within the brethren first. Yeah. You know, when you persecute for righteousness sake, you're living the right life, you're doing the right thing, they're calling you, they think, yeah, what do you think you're holy than who are, you know, they're accusing yeah. you of all kind of things. Yeah. But you're thinking it should be the, the, the fulfillment of the word in your life. Yeah. So really, Jesus at the beginning, I like that. He's telling us that this is what's going to happen so that we're not surprised. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is not persecution because... People see God's favor on our life mm -hmm. that we're following Him. Mm -hmm. This is because, not because God's chosen us, mm -hmm. because we've chosen discipleship. Mm -hmm. We've started to live that life. Mm -hmm. uh, we've chosen God's way. Mm -hmm. So I've got seven points. Mm -hmm. So shall we go through them? Absolutely. Number one, it's the only possible conclusion mm -hmm. to a holy life. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've read the scriptures, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus yeah, we'll suffer. will suffer persecution. But I wanted to just insert here, you know, there are, there's a type of Christian who, they, they say, I'm, I can't really, well, I'm not, I'm not a preacher, I'm not an evangelist, I don't really, I, I can't, I'm not a public speaker, I can't really talk about Jesus publicly, my faith is personal. But this one, it looks like you bold already. Now you've been equipped. You are able to now, you know, give an account, give a, uh, you know, the reason of the hope that is in you. But is that, is it appropriate when a Christian say, "Well, I believe you believe what you believe. I I, I won't push my belief on you." Is it? Is it? Is it? Yeah, please. Right. <laughs> They're deceived. <laughs> 
because if you're like Jesus and never speak, your life challenges people. Wow. It's the way you live. Yeah. So you can't hide. You can say, yes. well, I'm not a public speaker. And that's great. Mm -hmm. You don't have to speak. Mm -hmm. You challenge people by your lifestyle. They say, yeah. why don't you do that? Mm -hmm. I say you don't go to the pictures. You mm -hmm. don't go to discos. Why? Mm -hmm. So when you live differently because mm -hmm. you've got Christ in you, mm -hmm. that will also provoke them. Yes. So you can't escape. It, it really, they say, I don't want to be a real Christian. I'll just... Yeah, but, I keep but, myself with myself. Yeah, but if yeah. you've got the life of Christ in you, yes. it has to manifest outwardly. One way or another. One way. If you don't speak, it <laughs> yeah. comes out in your mannerism, yeah. in the way you live. So yeah. th there's no escaping, Joseph. I, I remember you said a few years ago, you said something about, you know, these people who have kind of like inverted pride. They, they look, sh they're, very, they're a bit shy. Or, well, I'm not really. But it really, it's that kind of a, they don't realize that it's... It's, it's pride. <laughs> yeah. But they think, oh, no, I Because can't. they want people to think well of them. There we go. Yes, so they don't yes. want to live a different yeah. life yeah. because people will say, oh, you're odd. Yeah. You, you, you've gone too far. You're a Bible basher. Yes. You're a holy yes. Joe. Yes. Um, so, so they don't want that. <laughs> so, so they hide not only the speech, they hide the lifestyle and yes. they compromise. Yes. Uh, no, no, this, this is true because it's, true, it's good for us to know this because we have no excuses really. The light is in you, so the light must shine if the yeah. light is there. So you can't say, I can't speak, I can't do this. No, the Holy Spirit in you wants to speak. He wants to... We are vessels. Yeah, you can speak quietly. You don't yes. have to preach in a loud voice. You can explain with meekness yes. the hope that's in you. Can be gentle. Hallelujah. But you, light gets rid of darkness, Joseph. You can't. It, Amen. If you if there's no manifestation, there's no light. And I like that because we have to always prove, in one way or another, that what Jesus said is true. Yes. His word has to come to pass. Yes. So if he said this will happen. It's only when it happens, not if it happens. It will happen. And, and there's something wrong if it doesn't. Yeah, there we go. It's, there's something yeah. wrong because Amen. Jesus said it will happen. Yeah. All that will live godly will suffer persecution. So if I'm not suffering persecution, yeah. Yeah. it means I'm not living a holy life. End of story. I'm not, I'm not different yeah. enough. Amen. So it's the only possible conclusion to a holy life. Number mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's personal. Mm -hmm. All the let's look at the, all the beatitudes. Mm -hmm. It says, "Blessed are the poor, the anyone. Poor. Yeah, mm -hmm. blessed are they. Mm -hmm. uh, blessed are the meek. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they. Mm -hmm. Blessed General. are the merciful. General. Blessed are the pure in heart." Mm -hmm. But now this last one, even the uh, the last weeks, mm -hmm. "Blessed are they mm -hmm. which are persecuted." It's not you. It's blessed mm -hmm. are they. Anyone. General, yeah, anyone. But now it says, verse eleven, mm -hmm. "Blessed are you." When men revile you, you and persecute you, you and say all manner of evil against you, you falsely for my sake. So yeah. now it's coming home. It's yes. not against the gospel. It's not yeah. against the church. It's mm -hmm. not against Jesus or religion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now it's you. They're mm -hmm. persecuting you personally. Yeah. So they're not criticizing your denomination. No. You know, they're not criticizing Christianity. Yeah. They're criticizing you. And yeah. that's why it's much harder to take. Yes. Yeah. You know, if you can't take um, the first one, mm -hmm. persecution because you're living a right life, mm -hmm. you'll never stand this persecution where it's attacking you personally. Absolutely. So that's the second thing. It's personal. It's you, not them. Mm -hmm. Number three, it's more difficult mm -hmm. because it takes more faith to suffer wrongfully. Yes. Oh, you my know, goodness. When you've done yes. nothing wrong. Yeah. So... If you've done something wrong and you suffer for it, yeah, Peter said, you know, take it, take it, take it. Silently, you made a mistake, quietly, so yes. it's all right. Uh, yeah. You should suffer. Mm -hmm. But when you've done nothing wrong mm -hmm. and you have to suffer for mm -hmm. it, it's much harder. So mm -hmm. I've got, I've got some scriptures. I think that's yeah. Peter's one of them. One Peter chapter mm -hmm. three. I, I need to say that this mm -hmm. is not. Joseph and my opinion <laughs> of it, we're, we're going to quote the scriptures. Yes. We're only saying what the Bible says, so yes. we need to back everything we say with, with the scriptures. scripture. Yes. Unless you think that we're over the top or yes. we've you know, got a persecution complex or something. We don't look, you don't even look for it, it will come. No. <laughs> yeah, 1 Peter 3, verse yeah. 15. Mm -hmm. 
but sanctify the Lord in your mm -hmm. hearts yes. and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh mm -hmm. you a mm -hmm. reason of the hope okay. that's in you yes. with meekness and mm -hmm. fear. Mm -hmm. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you mm -hmm. as evildoers, mm -hmm. they may be ashamed mm -hmm. that falsely accuse your good conversations in Christ. Mm -hmm. For it is better if the will of God be so, yeah. that you suffer for well-doing mm -hmm. than for doing evil. Yes. For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the, the unjust. unjust. We're following a man mm -hmm. who was crucified mm -hmm. when he'd done nothing wrong. Yes. So this is the pattern. The mm -hmm. just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being mm -hmm. put to death in the flesh, but quickened in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So that's quite a, a strong scripture. <laughs> and that's comfortable. That's a, that's a comfort because is you're not just suffering personally for yourself. He's giving you a pattern. Yeah. Don't, Christ has gone through it already. Yeah. So don't worry. Don't You know it's going to happen, but at least he has overcome. Because he did. You will be all right. Yeah. This is an, for me, it's a good exhortation. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. if you turn over the page, chapter 4, mm -hmm. verse 12. Beloved. So Peter's not saying it in an angry voice, you know, like <laughs> some zealot. You know, you've got to suffer, you've got to suffer. No. He's saying, dear brethren, beloved. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like a father. Look, son, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to start work now. You've mm -hmm. been through your school, mm -hmm. you know. It's not an easy life. You know, men will criticise you. Mm -hmm. uh, you. You'll find that they'll tell you to go and, you know, take mm -hmm. get a long rest or something yeah, and yeah, trick yeah. you. Mm -hmm. they'll, it's not easy when you start work. Mm -hmm. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though something strange has happened to you. Mm -hmm. We should expect it. But rejoice. Mm -hmm. So, in the, in the scripture, it says leap and dance for joy. joy. So joy is always connected with this suffering. Mm. It's not happiness. No. Because happiness is to do with happenings. Mm -hmm. You know, you give me £500, yeah. pound, I'm happy because something has pleased me. Yeah. This isn't something that pleased me, that makes me happy. Mm -hmm. This is the joy that you you're identified with the mm -hmm. life of Christ. Yeah. It's a deep joy. Amen, yeah. But rejoice in so much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do Christians think about that? How can I partake of Christ's sufferings? You know, I, I was told when I went to church that you know, Christ suffered so that I don't have to. How can I be a, <laughs> you know, how can yeah. I be a partaker of Christ's suffering? That's so true. People say that, yes. yes. That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad with exceeding joy. So there's that joy again. Mm -hmm. We have the pain now mm -hmm. and the joy later. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, a, a mother. She has the pain now to have the baby, mm -hmm. but when the baby's delivered, she has great joy. Amen. Amen. And it's proportional. The more pain, yeah. the more relief, the more joy. So, you know, suffering's part of life. You know, my father went uh, to fight the Germans in the last war mm -hmm. and he suffered, he got injured. You know, but when they won the war, the mm -hmm. jubilation, the buntings were out and yeah. everyone celebrated. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so after pain, after struggle, there mm -hmm. comes joy. And if you won't suffer, you, you'll never experience that joy. You'll mm -hmm. always be looking for something nice to make you happy, something to please you. But that's children. You know, they just want sweets all the time and play with the toys. When you grow up, you, you have to go through stuff. When you're married, you have to go through your tensions and your trials and your conflicts. But there's always joy when you make up. You know, I, I used to think that, you know, that thing that you said, that Christ suffers so we don't suffer. I used to think he's a verse in the Bible. Yeah. Because it's so much, the people say it all the time, that you're not supposed to be suffering. I'm thinking, is, does he say that somewhere? But if people have just accepted it that way. Yeah. That Christian, and that's why they accuse the devil all the time. Yeah, they believe it's in the Bible. The devil's made me suffer, it's not of yeah. God. But we're partakers of Christ's suffering. Yes. But the promise mm -hmm. that when his glory shall be revealed, when yes. we see him, mm -hmm. we'll be like him and mm -hmm. we'll be glad with exceeding joy, exuberant mm -hmm. yeah. joy. Mm -hmm. And... Hebrews 11. So we're not just bringing one scripture, a proof text. We're, we're looking at a few, and there's a lot more. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. that tell us that joy comes after the suffering. Hebrews chapter mm -hmm. 11. These are the examples of faith. And so the first 34 verses, they tell us, you know, by mm -hmm. faith they achieve this, by yep. faith they stop the mouth of lads, by faith. Mm -hmm. So faith to achieve things, wonderful things. Mm -hmm. But then verse 35, so it says, women receive their dead raised to life again. And then in the same sentence, it's, it switches and says, and others were tortured. So they were delivered, they were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. They refused deliverance. They could have been delivered by faith, mm -hmm. but they refused it to get a, a better resurrection. Has it been explained this better resurrection before? Well, what's a better resurrection? I mean, <laughs> if you're dead mm -hmm. and you're raised again... Mm -hmm. How can you have better than that? What's a better yeah. resurrection? It can only mean mm -hmm. the first resurrection. Yes. The resurrection where you're transformed into the image of Christ, when you're glorified. Mm -hmm. Because most Christians were raised from the dead like Lazarus in flesh and blood. And that's not a better one. No, the better one is Christ's resurrection. Because Hitler will be raised in his flesh and blood to face Christ, and all the wicked men of the earth, yeah. they'll be in the resurrection. Yes, yeah, okay. So... You want a better resurrection than everyone in the world yeah. and the Christians who are just followers. Yeah. Paul said that, you know, that I may know him mm -hmm. and, and the power of his resurrection, if yeah. any means I may yeah. obtain. Yeah. So he wanted that better resurrection. Yeah. I suppose it, might, it must be because when I look at Lazarus' resurrection, it was the same body and it's still flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. But the crisis one, there was no flesh, there was no blood anymore. No. The life was the spirit. He had an eternal body. Yes. And that's the bride and of that's Christ. that's for me, is, that is... That's a prize worth fighting yes. for. Yes, absolutely. That's what I'm looking for. So they're looking for a better yes. resurrection. Yes. They refused it. I'm going to, you yeah. know, they mm. that suffer with Christ will mm. also reign, reign with Christ. With them. Those that are in the first resurrection reign mm. with Christ mm. for a thousand years. Mm. Revelation said the rest of the dead... Mm. Rise not again no. till after the thousand years. Yes, yes. So they face the great white throne. Yes. And the name's in the Lamb's Book of Life, so mm. they have eternal life. Yeah. But they miss the first resurrection. They're mm. not the bride. They're mm. not New Jerusalem that comes mm. down to the new earth. They're the nations that are saved on the new earth. Mm. Revelation 21, 22. Amen. So, Amen. I mean, that's a whole study in itself. It but, is. Uh, it's funny now, I was looking at it last night. <laughs> and so it says, And others had trials of cruel mocking and scourging. Mm -hmm. Yea, moreover, a bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder. They were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and mm. goatskins, mm -hmm. being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves. And all these, having obtained a good report yeah. through faith, mm -hmm. received not the promise. They didn't want deliverance. They wanted the yeah. promise of a better resurrection. Mm -hmm. God having provided some better things for us yes. that they without us should not be made perfect. So we're going to join those saints. Yeah. They'll mm -hmm. be in the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. So that's point three. It's more mm -hmm. difficult mm -hmm. because it takes more faith mm -hmm. to suffer wrongfully. It takes more faith not to retaliate when you're yes. accused. Mm -hmm. It takes more faith to suffer when you've done nothing wrong. Number four, mm -hmm. this is an introduction to the, what I call the extra mile philosophy. Mm. When we get into, you know, the end of chapter five, yeah. it's going to say, turn the other cheek, yes. go the extra go the mile. Extra mile. Yeah. So a good man will go the first mile, a first yeah. Christian will go the first mile, mm -hmm. only a fool will go another mile when he doesn't have to. Mm. It's it's more than duty. Yeah, in Luke chapter six, if you want someone to take your cloak, Give him the other one. Yeah, turn the other cheek. So a good man will say, okay, no fisticuffs, I yes. won't retaliate. Yes. Only a fool will take it again, yes. or a real Christian. Yes. So th this is a, a good test. Mm -hmm. You know, God will deliver you every time. When Peter yes. was drowned and he said, help, Lord, yeah. no problem. Jesus rescued him. When they were on the, the lake, mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. the boat, they were drowning. Mm -hmm. Lord, don't you care we perish? So God stopped the storm and mm -hmm. saved them. 
But he said, yeah. oh, you of little faith. Yeah. Why weren't you willing to go through the storm? Why weren't you willing to suffer a little while? Mm -hmm. You always want deliverance. So <laughs> God will deliver you. Yeah. But you see, you miss that resurrection, you're not following Christ mm -hmm. because he, you know, he said I could have called a leg legions of angels yes, to help me, yes. but to refuse deliverance. Jesus mm -hmm. refused deliverance. Amen. I believe Amen. the angels were hanging over the balconies of heaven, yeah. expecting Jesus. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, because it says they inquired to look into it. Yes. Because when they were going to throw Jesus over the brow of the hill, yes. the angels came and just parted the people and Jesus walked through. So they're there to protect there are there are messages to protect us, Joseph, and right. they're they're there to protect Jesus, but he refused. He said that I'm not going to call on them. I'm yeah. not going to ask for deliverance. Yeah, because he needed to go through the cross. He needed yeah. and we need to not ask for deliverance. We need mm. to say, Lord, don't take me out of the trial, mm. take me through it. Through. Because after the trial there's the resurrection, after the death resurrection yeah. so the, it's always better on the other side of the trial than being delivered in it yeah. it's always better mm -hmm. so it's a it's an introduction to the extra mile philosophy uh, and people say well isn't isn't it foolish to defend myself well we should defend others I hope if somebody was criticising you and saying mm. Joseph's a wine bibber and a glut like Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and he's a womanizer and he's a secret drinker, I hope I would say, hey, I know Joseph. Don't talk about my friend like that. I Definitely. trust him. Definitely. And I hope you would defend me. Definitely. But if it's against me, it's all right. Yeah. Jesus never defended himself. Yes. So, I, of course, I defend others. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's all right, I can take it. They, they, they call Jesus a wine bibber, a glutton, cast out devils by Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. He didn't retaliate. He mm -hmm. didn't strike them. The disciples said, shall we bring fire down from heaven? Yes. And so, mm -hmm. He yeah. says, that's the wrong spirit. Yeah. You know, if they accuse me, if mm -hmm. they do things, it's all right. Leave the tares yes. with the wheat. We'll root, God will together. sort them out yeah. later. I can see why this should be, again, comforting because you're following Jesus He's the one who has to be in your face all the time when, you, when you're facing all these trials and tribulations. You need to know he's going through it. That becomes your consolation that, yeah. okay, Jesus overcame, I can do it as well. Yeah. And then he's in me, yes. But not only Jesus, what about all these people? Yeah, the, the cloud Stephen? of witnesses. The cloud of witnesses. <laughs> yeah. And what about modern people, John Wesley? I mean, they threw stones at him. They threw yes. him in the duck pond. Yeah. You know, they said he's in line with the Pope. He's a yeah. papist. And, and all sorts of things. What yeah. about the martyrs who were burned to the stake for writing the Bible? Oh, yeah. You know, they wrote the Bible and they suffered. They were willing to suffer and get burned to the stake to bring the word of God to us. Tyndale and those people. Yeah, so grace. We've, we've got modern examples. It's, we don't have to go back to the prophets yeah. and Jesus. Yeah. There, there, there's people. Yeah. There, there's Jim Elliot who went to the, uh, is it Peru or, yeah, I think it was no, Peru, sure. mm -hmm. to, to the Indians. And he got axed to death with the machetes. And he's the man who said he's no fool to give up what mm -hmm. he can't keep, keep. Yeah. to gain what he can't lose. He's a modern day martyr. He refused deliverance. He went there. And his wife, a few years later, she went back after they martyred her husband. She says, I must go back and finish the job. Right. And she went back and preached to them and there was revival. The very people who killed her husband. Uh, this is a Christianity that we yes, don't yes, that we want don't to talk, talk about. about. This yes. is the real Christianity. Playing church isn't real Christianity. Going and having nice meetings and sitting and, and entertained with a nice music group. That's yeah. not Christianity. Yeah. It's radical Christianity. Yeah, it's real. It's real. Like you were saying, even at the first one, the first the Beatitude that talks about Suffering for righteousness sake is like training, it's training yeah. you to this last one. Yeah. Because we should have backbone. Christians should be strong. Sure. We shouldn't be whimsical type. And Jesus expects us to be able to handle it. Well, he talks about soldiers. Yes. We're soldiers in the army. Yeah. You yeah. know, stand and put mm. on the armor. Yes. Because, you know, all the fiery darts of the enemy. Amen. We, we, Christians are soft. They, they have not learned because they have nice sermons to keep them in the church so they don't leave. So they're never going to be soldiers. <laughs> so it isn't foolish uh, not to defend ourselves. It's very wise. Mm -hmm. 
And this extra mile philosophy, I've got a study called God Demands Increase. Yes. And God gets angry when we don't, because Mm -hmm. there's no reward for doing our duty. Mm -hmm. Um, He doesn't like duty. uh, You know, Jesus says, when you've done all that you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I've got the scripture. uh, Luke 17. Mm -hmm. I think this is the one, Joseph. He said, you are an unprofitable servant. Because Christians say, well, I never miss church, I pay me tithes. You know, <laughs> in other words, I've done my duty. But there's no rewards for duty. Luke 17. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The disciples said, increase our faith, and he told them a story. <laughs> and he said... You know, a servant is ploughing in the fields, mm-hmm. he's working for you, he comes home mm-hmm. and the boss says to him, right, make my food, mm-hmm. and he makes the meal for the boss, and then he can eat himself. And he says, does he thank him because he's done that? No, that's mm-hmm. his paying him. Mm-hmm. The boss doesn't hug you every night when you're leaving and say, oh, thank you for working today. He doesn't need to hug you, he pays no. your wages. Mm-hmm. It's a contract, it's a business deal. Yeah. You work, he pays you. Mm-hmm. And you do your duty. And if you do your duty, you get paid. Mm -hmm. If you don't do your duty, you get the sack. Mm -hmm. But there's no reward for that. So Jesus says, uh, verse 9, does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? No, Mm -hmm. he's done his duty. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So likewise you, when you've done all those things which you're commanded, Mm -hmm. so when I do everything that Jesus tells me, feed the poor, love my enemies, bless those that curse me, you know, fast, arms, give prayer. When I do everything that God tells me, Mm -hmm. I've got to say I'm an unprofitable servant because there's no profit in duty. There's no profit in the first mile. A good man will walk, religion will go the first mile. Only a real Christian will go the second uh, uh, all religions will turn the first cheek, mm-hmm. only a fool will turn the second, because that's your duty. Mm-hmm. Go the, the first mile, turn the cheek. Mm-hmm. We're unprofitable, so we've only done that which was our duty to do. Yeah. So there's no praise for no. duty. No. You've done what you were told, that's great. But love goes the extra, the extra mile. mile. Love does more than duty. I don't want my wife to do her duty. So she irons my clothes. But when she's ironing them, if she's thinking, oh, I hate ironing, I'm I'm sick of, you know, why does he have so many shirts to iron? Why? why?" Complain, murmur inside. Yeah, she's murmuring. Yeah. Uh, She's Um, doing a duty. I don't want to make my meals and think, well, you know, he's my husband, I've got to make his meals. Maurice, I'm thinking here, you know, the word assumes that we're doing these things already, you know. The hungry, you're feeding the hungry in the poor. What about those who haven't even started? <laughs> they haven't even started a duty. No. They're, they're not they, fasting. They're not fasting. They're not. They're not arms giving. Not, I've been looking at them thinking. Loving your enemies, that's duty. Yeah. Because that's it's people, what we're commanded to do. Yes. Love your enemies. Bless those that curse, curse you. That's you duty. Pray for those who spitefully use you and abuse you. When you've done all that you're commanded to do, these yeah. are commandments, not I've been looking at them thinking, yeah, and it's almost like there are people who haven't even started doing it. They're so comfortable. Oh, this is... this is Well, an illustration would be a, a woman mm-hmm. who has her children. Mm-hmm. So she does her duty. She feeds them. Yeah. She clothes them. Yeah. She takes them to school. She does all that. Mm-hmm. But here's a bus coming Mm -hmm. and the little child doesn't see it. Mm -hmm. And so she doesn't think she's Mm -hmm. not doing duty. It's love. She runs out Mm -hmm. and grabs hold of the child and the bus kills her. Mm -hmm. But the child's saved. That's love, not duty. She didn't have to risk her own life. Yes, yes. So th- there's a risk in love. Yeah, love does You're doing more than duty. Yes. You're not doing what, well, I'm supposed to do. I've got to look after my kids. Mm-hmm. You don't have to sacrifice your own life for them. Yeah. So Christ didn't have to do that for us, but he sacrificed his life for us. And Paul said, if Christ laid down his life for you, mm, yes. why won't you lay down your life for your, for your brother? Yes. But Christians don't. Yes. What, I think one man said that the yeah. Christian army is the only army that shoots the <laughs> wounded. <laughs> Instead of restoring them when they're wounded, we shoot them. That's quite bad. 
Uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, he says, verse 14, he says, We judge first that if one dies, all died. We're all dead men walking. We should be. End of story. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is. We no longer honestly, are I'm, own. Just, I'm just seeing in a fresh way that there are people who are not even willing to start. I remember you saying there are those who go, there are those who pray, there are those who pay. There's some always something to be done. Yes. You can't be a passive Christian. No such thing. Yeah, my wife's just said, uh, she's in the studio, she just pointed out, she was in a church and she said to a pastor, you know, about loving our enemies and doing this. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, well, Jesus, you know, he said, we've got to love our enemies and do all this. But mm -hmm. it was a standard that he doesn't expect us to keep. Yes. He knows that we can't do it. Mm -hmm. he, he loved the whole world, but we don't have to. We can't be expected to keep that it. That is, that is almost denying Christ. It is denying. It's not almost. Yes, it. that is. I'm trying to be <laughs> safe. That is denying Christ because that is boldly, blindly, completely denying Christ. Yes. And making him almost like a false prophet. This is yes. making him like he he's saying things. Put it put it yeah put it burden on us and he doesn't even he and knows we can't, we can't it. yeah. It's like he's not, he's not meaning what he's saying. Oh, don't take it literally. Wow. It's, it's serious, no, isn't it? This is serious. A Christian cannot say he has nothing to do. No. That's, that, that is. No. no, Maurice, thank you. Because so, this so just wakes me up a bit. I like, I like what you said, that, that Christians are not even doing the duty. Just, Never mind the extra mile love. They, yeah. They're not doing the duty. Because everything that the Bible says is commandments. So when you've done all that you're commanded to do, you've got to say, I'm unprofitable. There's no profit in that. Well, Corinthians 1, Corinthians 13, mm -hmm. we've cast devils out, we've done this, we've yeah. done all this, yeah. but Without the motive love. wasn't love. Yes. So there's no profit in it. Yeah. It profits you nothing. 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 Because the only profit you'll get when you stand before yes. God is what you've done if the extra mile, yeah. what you've done because of love, not duty. Yeah. The leaders, like uh, uh, Joanna was saying, the leaders, they definitely, obviously they can't lead us where they haven't been. They can't teach what they haven't been through. No. And so they rather just go and... Uh, <sighs> They're products of their environment, yes, the Bible college. Yes. We, we, it's and it's very, gone very soft. Frustrating. Yeah. Bible, my own denomination now, the Bible College, they're giving yeah. university degrees. <laughs> They've linked with universities to give you a, accreditation and give you some doctorate. <laughs> Some title. We've gone so far. We, how far have we gone when people want titles? Yeah. So we get better get back to yes. our notes. <laughs> yes. So uh, there's no reward for duty. Mm -hmm. uh, number five, it's the only beatitude with instructions. Yes. All the other beatitudes, they're just a statement. Blessed mm. are the pure in heart, this mm -hmm. is the promise. Blessed are the merciful, mm. this is the promise. And the last one says, blessed are they which are persecuted mm -hmm. for righteousness' sake, then the promise. Mm -hmm. But this one, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll read yeah, it. It gives you instructions. This is the only one with instructions. It's, it's interesting. Blessed are you when men revile you, persecute you, say, all man of evil against you falsely for my sake. Mm -hmm. This is the instruction, rejoice. Mm -hmm. So it's not a sad thing, oh, poor me. Mm -hmm. It's not, oh, well, everyone's criticising me. You know, people are this and all. Oh. Mm -hmm. God doesn't feel sorry for us when we're persecuted. He knows what we're going through, yeah. but he doesn't feel sorry for us mm -hmm. because he tells us to rejoice. Mm -hmm. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, mm -hmm. for great is your reward in heaven. So we're not fools. Mm -hmm. We're like Jesus. Mm -hmm. He set his face like a flint, flint. to go through for the for joy, joy that was on the other side. Yeah. The joy doesn't take away the pain, but he we're willing to suffer is, is, because yeah. of what's on the other yeah. side. A woman's yeah. willing to go through a lot of pain mm -hmm. to bring life into the world, to bring a baby. She's willing mm -hmm. to suffer to bring life, knowing that the joy for the next 20 years of bringing children up, seeing them grow, yes. seeing them develop, yes. saying the first words, walking for the first time. The joy that it brings mm -hmm. far outweighs the few hours of pain. Yes. You've got 20 years of joy if you've got good children. And rejoice, for great is your reward in heaven, 
had so persecuted they the prophets mm-hmm. which were before you. You're mm-hmm. aligning yourself with the prophets, these great men of God. Yes. You, you're, you're part yes. of that cloud of witnesses. Yes. You become one of the witnesses. Yes. It, it's it's uh, no wonder it says rejoice. And Luke 6, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. it identifies, that's point six, it identifies us with the, the prophets, Luke chapter 6. Now this is the, the Sermon on the Mount is in Luke chapter 6, verse, chapter 9, chapter yeah. 12. But and it's open, paraphrased, it's yeah. different. It brings both, both And this sides. is what it says, Luke chapter 6, mm-hmm. verse 22. Verse 22, blessed are you when men hate you mm-hmm. and when they separate you from their company and when they reproach you and cast out your name as evil <laughs> for the Son of Man's sake. So it's the same for, for yes. Christ's sake. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, great is your reward in heaven. For in like manner did they to their fathers the prophets. Mm-hmm. So it says the same. Yeah. And number seven, mm-hmm. it's to do with our reputation, not God's. They're not criticising God, they're mm-hmm. criticising you. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've covered this. Surely I should defend my reputation. Yeah. No. You defend other people's reputation. Yeah. And if nobody defends you, then you take it. It's you, all right. You let God. Yeah. God is your... He will vindicate you. He, God yeah. is the one, yeah. So th- there's the points again, just in ta- mm-hmm. case yeah. you're taking notes. Mm-hmm. Number one, it's the only possible conclusion to a holy life. <laughs> yes. Number two, it's now personal. Personal. When they persecute you, mm-hmm. not they, not yeah. persecute the church, yeah. not your pastor, yeah. but you. Mm-hmm. Number three, it's more difficult because it takes more faith to suffer when mm-hmm. you've done nothing wrong. Yes. Number four, it's it's this introduction to the extra mouth philosophy, doing more than your duty. Mm-hmm. Number five, it's the only beatitude with instructions. Mm-hmm. Number six, it identifies us with Jesus mm-hmm. and the prophets and the yes. modern day martyrs. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And number seven, it's to do with our reputation, not mm-hmm. God's. Mm-hmm. So... I'm coming to an end. I've got yeah. examples mm-hmm. because last week we looked at Joseph. Do you remember yeah. the envy? Yeah, yeah. Yes. We looked at Joseph and we looked at David mm-hmm. and we looked at Jesus. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look at the three people. Yes. And we'll Let's see do, do that. Yeah. that the first beatitude, the first persecution mm-hmm. happens at the beginning of your life. When mm-hmm. you accept Jesus and you become different mm-hmm. and God's favours on your life, then Christians get envy of us. He's only a new convert. Let's go, what, Joseph. He doing Let's go Joseph. <laughs> yes. But yes. so Joseph, yes. at the beginning of his life, when the brothers saw the father's favour and yes. God's favour on yes. him, they persecuted him. But the second one comes when you mature. Yeah. So at the beginning, you oh, get yeah. this first persecution. Okay. Mm-hmm. The, the second persecution never comes at first. It's mm-hmm. when you mature. Yeah. So I'm going to look at the end of Joseph's life mm-hmm. or a lot later, David's life and Jesus' life, and we'll find that they suffered this second persecution. So it's almost like test a teller to your growth in Let's say your growth in God, in the Lord, and because the more, as soon as you overcome one, you can't rejoice and say, "Oh yeah, I've done it." Now and there's another one that's coming. It's another one that is. But yeah. God lets you test and yes. let you mature, yes. and then you, because this is yeah. the ultimate. Yes, absolutely. You, to be persecuted when you've done nothing wrong. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a Christian, but yeah, that's I'm hard not, to take. Yeah, I'm a Christian, but I'm not a doormat. I'm not stupid. God's given me a brain. I, I'm not going to let them talk about me like that. Yes. And they think they're defending Christ, no. but really they're defending themselves. Mm-hmm. So, so many Christians think they've given their all to Jesus. If I'm in a church, Joseph, mm-hmm. and there's 5,000 members there, mm-hmm. and I say, who's given the life to Jesus? Everybody raised their hand. No, no, yeah, 95% will put the hand up. They've given, they haven't given the life to Jesus. They've given very little to Jesus. Yes. All means all. Yeah. They've given 10% of their income so yeah. that they can keep 90% for themselves. Yeah. They give a God some of the time. Mm-hmm. They, they go to church on a Sunday, Bible study. Yes. They give a few hours a week to yeah. God. But they haven't given all. What about our talents? Yes. Have we give God 
those to God. And God says, well, I don't want to use it anymore. Yes. You're a great singer, but I don't want to use your talent. You see, if you give it to God, he Jumped may in. use it or he may not. Yes. Have we given all our money to God? I mean, I'm a, a bond slave. Yes. You know, when I go to work and I get my wages, if I've given everything to God, if it's not my love, God owns all my wages. Mm -hmm. I've got to say to God, what should I do with it? Hallelujah. And God will say, well, feed the poor, mm -hmm. treat your wife now and again, do yeah, give whatever wisdom. God says. But yeah. it's not mine, but I'm a steward of it. Yes. Because it's not mine, I've given my life. If I give my life, everything else is God's. So he what owns, about my he, time? Yes. He you know, owns people you. say, well, I never miss church, so they give two hours to church and an hour there and back so four hours on a Sunday to mm -hmm. God but the rest of the day is theirs and the rest of the week is theirs till the Bible study but 24-7 is God's if you give him your life yes. you are not your own you're bought with a price. price your time's not your own Yes. what about your reputation am I willing to give my reputation to God so that he could drag it through the mud like he did with Jesus yeah. I, I, am I willing to be called like Joseph yeah he was a rapist. He raped his boss's wife to everyone's view. Everyone in prison, what are you in for? Well, raping my boss's wife. You know, I, I, he could say he didn't do it, but he's in prison, he's been convicted. Mm -hmm. So a man in prison for murder, if he says, I didn't do it, the, the other prisoners say, yeah, they all say that. <laughs> you know, I didn't do it, I didn't. You know, mm -hmm. but he's in prison, he's been convicted. Yeah. What about my self-esteem? Ooh. What about my hurts? Have I given God Ooh. those? Ooh. Have I given God my life? Have I willing to die? If I give God my life, he can take it. Mm -hmm. God could say, Morris, uh, you've given me a life. I'm going to take you tonight. You're going to die tonight, leave your family, your young family. Would I be happy? Yeah, no, most people will not want to go. You see, we say we've given God our life. That yeah. includes your physical life mm -hmm. and everything else. You're practical. So it's easy to think we've given God everything, but there's a cost to character, Joseph. Mm -hmm. So let's quickly look at the examples. Yes. Joseph. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't read it because it's the whole story. Yes, it, yes. It's mm -hmm. in Genesis 39 and the mm -hmm. life of Joseph goes right through to the end of Genesis. But Joseph was accused uh, uh, of raping his boss's wife. I've uh, alluded mm -hmm. to that. So this is false accusation. Yes. He was persecuted because of envy. But now is accused of doing something he didn't do. Yeah. It was a very opposite. She was trying to seduce him. Yeah. And yet he's put in prison, but I don't hear him complaining. I don't hear him, you know, he, he took it. It's a type of Jesus, Joseph. I, I, I always and wonder it. why Jesus never mentioned him. He mentioned Jonah. He mentioned as Jonah was in the belly, so would the son of man be. But he never mentioned, he mentioned jo no, no. Joseph because Joseph is such a that kind of perfect pattern, even yeah. at the reconciliation with the yeah, brothers. Yeah. No, he doesn't mention it. Yeah, he doesn't. It's interesting. We will know. We will know. So Joseph, yeah. at the end of it all, mm. much later in life, was now tested with false accusation. Yes. Uh, they were envious because they saw God on his life. His mm -hmm. father favoured him. God favoured him. Mm -hmm. But now it's false accusation. Yes. Uh, and he took it. Uh, David, mm -hmm. at the beginning of David's life, Saul was persecuting mm -hmm. because of envy. We know that mm -hmm. David's Saul slain his thousands, and yeah. David is ten. So ten they were thousand. envious. Yeah. But now this is false accusation. Uh, 2 Samuel 16. I'll read mm -hmm. this because yes. not everyone knows this story. Mm -hmm. I'll read from verse 5. When King David came to Baharim, mm -hmm. behold, there came a man out of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. So he's cursing David. And he cast <laughs> stones at David. And all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and his left hand. So David stood with his armies. Mm -hmm. Always. His strong men. And thus said Shimei, when he cursed, saying, Come out, thou bloody man, thou man of Belial. Well, he wasn't a son of Belial, was he, David? Mm. It's false accusation. Yes. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. Well, that wasn't true. He was <coughs> suffering because of his adultery and murder, <laughs> not because of Saul. Mm -hmm. So it's false accusation. 
and the Lord had delivered the kingdom unto the hand of Absalom thy son, and behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. That wasn't true, it's was false accusation. Again. It wasn't because of the house of Saul, it was because of his own sin. Mm -hmm. Then said Abishai, the son of Zeruah, this is one of the mighty men, unto the king, why should this dead dog curse my lord? <laughs> Let me go over, I pray, and I'll take off his head. That's right. I'll, I'll just, one blow and I'll take off his head. And da what did David say? Yeah, that's not true. Kill him. David said, no. Then the king said, what have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruah? <laughs> So let him curse, because the Lord has said unto him, Curse David, who shall say then, where hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son which came forth of my bowels seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse, for mm -hmm. the Lord hath bitten him. Yeah. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction, and mm. the Lord will requite me good for his curse in this day. Wow. I'm not going to retaliate. Yes. Maybe God will require. Maybe yes. God will look after me because I'm going to be meek. I'm not going to retaliate. So this was hard for David because here's a man and said, "I'll sort it out for yeah. you." H how many times were we wronged falsely? And people <clears> says, "I'll <throat> defend you. I'll go and sort him out." Mm -hmm. And we think, "Oh, thank you, Maurice." The 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 wisdom that David had did did this just out of context do did he have the holy spirit in him or with him he had it with him for sure because he just had an unusual yeah i mean i know about solomon's wisdom but david's it's just far it's just so deep yeah he said the lord he, he saw god in it he said the yeah, lord's told him to do yeah, it it's part yeah. of a punishment let him curse me to god all the time he always had a lord before his face you know he made it he just because for me to have this kind of insight, you know, into a, a man after God's own heart. Yes, this is how God thinks. <clears throat> I'm sure his servant was like, "What? what what's wrong with him?" Yeah, yeah, yes. They didn't right. understand. No, no. But he, he knew God. He said, yes. "Maybe God will see this mm -hmm. and be kind to me." Yeah, so, amen. so that's Joseph. That's, that's David. David. That was David yeah. mm -hmm. He came through his first test, mm -hmm. and now he's come through a, a more difficult yes. one where they're accusing him wrongly. Because Saul said to him, David, you're more righteous than me. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't criticizing him, but now this man was cursing David and saying things that weren't true. And then Jesus, mm -hmm. at the beginning of his ministry, they threw him over the brow of the hill for yeah. envy. Who is the carpenter's son? Yeah. How can he speak all these gracious words? And, and they were envy of him. Envious, and they threw him. Out, they wanted to throw him over the hill. But later in his life, this is what Peter says of Jesus. Yeah. One Peter, chapter two. Peter, Peter, Peter. Mm -hmm. You go ahead, Moses. Because Jesus died mm -hmm. as a blasphemer and a wine bibber. Yeah. And a false prophet, they accused him. Mm -hmm. They said he cast out devils by Beelzebub. Right. Yeah. So that in later in life, he got all this false accusation. Mm -hmm. um, so we know that. I've not got the scriptures for that. We know he was called a wine bibber, yeah. a glutton, cast out devils by Beelzebub. But this is what Peter said. Verse 19 of chapter 2, 1 Peter. For this is thankworthy. Mm -hmm. If a man for conscience sake towards God endure grief, mm -hmm. suffering wrongfully. So it's exactly what Jesus said, suffering mm -hmm. wrongfully. For what glory is it if when you're buffeted for your faults, yes. you take it patiently? Patiently. But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable to God. Mm -hmm. For even here unto were you called. So we called to suffer. There's yeah. a clear scripture. Yeah. Even here unto we are called, because Christ also suffered for us, mm -hmm. leaving us an example that we, we should, should follow, follow in his footsteps. Yeah. So how can a preacher say we shouldn't suffer? Christ has suffered so we don't have to. He said Christ suffered as an example <laughs> that we should follow in his footsteps, who did no sin. Neither was guile found Probably in his him. mouth, who when he was reviled, 
because that's part of the scripture. When men revile you and persecute you, when Jesus was reviled, he reviled not again. Mm -hmm. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, that we being dead to sins Mm -hmm. should live unto righteousness, by whose Mm -hmm. stripe we are healed. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jesus is the ultimate example, Joseph. So, that's the study. He went as a lamb to the slaughter. Yeah. And he opened up his mouth. Willingly. Willingly. So Not he, his will, but God's yeah. will. He says, I'll do your will. So yes. I'm doing it willingly. His will yeah. chose God's will. So he did it willingly. So the conclusion. Yes. There's a cost to be like Christ. So there's a cost to get the character. Yes. And then we've got the character. There's a cost to the consequences of the character. <laughs> yes. To obtain it, <clears throat> mm-hmm. you know, and habit is overcome by habit. We already have the wrong character, yes. so we have to change it little by little. Yes. And we'll go through that in the Sermon on Mount. Mm-hmm. We'll find out how to change it. Uh, but the rewards are great. Mm-hmm. Not only in this life, the joy of following Jesus, mm-hmm. but we'll reign with Christ for a thousand years. So there's no need to fear. No. When we're renewed in our mind. Mm -hmm. If our mind is renewed, we don't need to fear because we know his grace is sufficient in all circumstances. That's what I want to say. If you're fearful, it's because mm -hmm. your mind's not been renewed. You've been told, well, you don't have to suffer. God just wants to bless you Mm -hmm. and we'll take over the world and we'll have all the power and we'll rule the nations. We've got to take the nations for Jesus. If you've been told that, then you fear suffering. Mm -hmm. But if your mind's been renewed, and the Sermon on the Mount will do that, if your mind is renewed, then you don't fear because you know that his grace is sufficient for you. Amen. <clears throat> and that's the power in the Sermon on the Mount, because Sermon on the Mount exposes all these things so you can begin to get familiar with them. And I believe this is essential for us to go through it so that we can know what, what, what the Lord expects of us. Yeah. yeah. And for me, I really am I'm, I'm so thankful for this because it's such a challenge. But it's the realization more is many don't know this. They don't go through this. They don't go word verse by verse through this. So they don't know. And yet the Lord is saying that it will happen. So, and, and I believe, I'm just praying. I'm just praying for those who have any doubt. They need to go through this to read it. Not our opinion, but God's word is yeah. speaking here. So we need to understand that the Sermon on the Mount is so vital and what Jesus said is truth and it will happen to us. Not not because we're looking for it, but because it's ordained. But we are to rejoice because Jesus has overcome. Yeah. Amen. And and I found it true in my own life. Uh, I've never had so much false accusation as the last few years. I have people who said things about me that are not true, you know, uh, and it's hard to take and I have to... You know, learn to be gracious, but yeah. his grace is sufficient, Joseph. And yeah. uh, even now, there's people who are accusing me. And of it things. comes from the people that you trust that they're supposed to be loving you and fair yeah. having fellowship. Yeah. Often, people that I've trained have been through the Sermon on the Mount and somehow yeah. they've been deceived. Yeah. And, and they, 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 they turn against you. They turn against me. I've had I've, that many times, Joseph, and it's it hurts me. Yeah. It's not that it doesn't hurt, pain is pain, suffering yes. is suffering. Yeah. And it hurts me that these people who I thought love me yes. and I love them uh, have accused me of all sorts of things without coming to me and finding if it's true they believe lies. And wow. So it's it's not easy, Joseph. No, but it's not. His grace is always sufficient. Absolutely. It's making me strong, Joseph. Absolutely. It's, it's helping me to love my enemies. Yeah. It's good. Because it's a double warming because one way it hurts you, but then... I'm think I'm thinking, I thought they would have grown by now. Yeah. I thought they would have understood. And then you're thinking, Lord, am I wasting my time? We've been through this and they haven't changed. Yeah. So it's like, oh Lord. It's yes, his grace is sufficient. Difficult. So his I should pray yeah. and ask you. Yes, help. please, yeah. Mm-hmm. Father. Hallelujah. Help us to understand mm-hmm. what cr- true Christianity is, Lord. Yes. Help us to understand that we're following a man, Christ Jesus, who lived on this earth in a Mm. flesh and blood Mm. and suffered and reviled not again when he was reviled, but he was willing to lay down his life 
Father, here's our example. And we just pray that we'll be willing to go through this process to Mm. have the persecution for righteousness' sake and Mm. then for my name's sake. Uh, And Lord, help us, Lord. It's not easy when it's personal accusation against ourselves, when they revile us and say things that are not true. But Lord, your grace is sufficient. And I just pray Mm -hmm. that that people who are fearful Mm. will have their mind renewed. They'll go through the Sermon on the Mount with us and get strong in the mind, renew the mind, be bold and have the mind of Christ so that we can be soldiers in these last days and we can stand Mm -hmm. uh, against all the wiles of the devil. Father, I ask it in your name. And, And... I pray for Joseph and I that after preaching, we don't become a castaway, that we we live this lifestyle that we're preaching. Help us, Father. Amen. Amen. See you next week. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.